Hello, my name is Matthew Paget, and I have been working in the print studio since February of this year. I was awarded the, uh, I was one of the recipients of the graduate award scheme, and uh, through a couple of conversations I had with with John, we realised that um, my drawing style was. Uh, it lent itself to exploring etching, basically. Um, I, what, some of the pen drawings that I made for my degree show um, were uh, quite finely detailed, um, built up lots of cross-hatching, basically. And John saw this link between that and etchings of the 16th, 17th, 18th centuries. So I, I, mean, I was obviously aware of that, and you know, Dura and Holbein and various people have, have informed my aesthetic, I suppose. But this was a kind of a good sort of chance for me to actually focus on on that particular part of what I do. Um, then a book that he recommended that I use, um, or that I read, uh, was William Ivan's book that he wrote in the 40s. And that was about um, etchings and processes of labour and how technological advances had developed in accordance with the... and how did the drawing styles developed out of the technical capabilities of the machinery at, the, at that time. So that was a, a kind of good book for me to read. Certainly this phrase, the net of rationality, which I think Ivan used to describe the way that lines can be interlaced over each other and create these nets in which the image is caught. So I really, I really like that particular aspect. So then, um, so I did the etching course and uh, since then I've been working on uh, a few images, one, one image in particular and uh, the f uh, it's sort of taken from the language of botanical illustration and uh, developing that, twisting it a bit, which is similar to the work that I've been doing in, the, in, uh, in my degree. And, yeah, just kind of developing that further, I suppose, and looking at it a bit more. I've really enjoyed coming here. I think it's, uh, it's a great place. It's always been very... The people have always been really encouraging. The technical stuff or pretty knowledgeable, which is very useful because even though I'd done my degree in printmaking, I didn't actually do th that much printmaking when I was actually there. So it was, it was been good to kind of consolidate my knowledge and develop it. I've been looking at the language of flowers and the way that Victorians would attach different meanings to particular flowers and it struck me as quite interesting that some flowers would have apparently quite disparate meanings attached to them. So the same flower could mean uh, frigidness and I love you with all my heart. So, um, and this kind of fitted it in with my broader project of um, looking at and being interested in things that are kind of not one thing or the other, but somewhere between the two. And, um, yeah, I've, I've, I have a kind of an innate, innate sympathy with not one thing or the other. Um, I was born in the middle of the year in a very middle-class setup in, a, in the Midlands, um, in the middle of the week. All these middles that kind of... Uh, so I think my, my sympathies for extremes and finding some way in between the two are sort of hardwired. Um, so that, so yeah, so taking that as a kind of template almost and then working on some images that I'll be then adding text to. So the flower is a sort of, uh, is the starting point and then the different symbolisms that the hydrangea has will then be referenced in a series of different narrative uh, text pieces that I'll be adding to the print in a, at a later stage. It's been a bit of a struggle, um, which I think learning new things always is, which is, you know, as it should be. Um, so, 
yeah, I was... I, 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 I tried not to get too... Well, no, I didn't get too disheartened by the, by the failures or the, the mistakes um, or the things that didn't work quite how I thought they would. But um, I'm really pleased that I've been able to adapt my drawing style to um, the medium of etching which is, that, that was a kind of main thing for me to do, which I, I have kind of nailed, I think. So I think it, this is just a, the start for, for me of, of using etching. And, um, and, and I mean, it has, etching is quite, uh, it's, an, it's so in, intensive and there's so many different elements to the process that whereas if you just go onto a computer, you, click print, you click OK, and, and within five seconds you've got your image. Here you, you have to work through so many different elements of this process using things that you, you know, you have to wear rubber gloves, you have to wear masks, you can't, you know, you, you work in this very con controlled environment really. Um, and so that, that to me means or leads to a, a bigger commitment to the image that you're making. And I think that that maybe does come through, maybe. I, d I don't know, maybe it doesn't. I'm still working it out. But whether, you know, digital versus etching or... Because I'm wary that I don't, you know, I don't really want my work to just be looking backwards or some kind of... It's not all nostalgic. And, you know, the images that I draw, or the, say the flowers that I draw, they've all been taken from Google image views and, uh, sorry, the Google image searches. And I always reference the file name of each JPEG that I've drawn um, by including each reference, the, the number reference or the whichever um, sequence they're using for the file name. Um, I always put that somewhere on the, on the image. So it's not, it's not just a, a botanical illustration done in the style of a 17th, 18th century etcher. It's, um, it's kind of taking that, but it's also, I suppose it introduces those ideas of prized specimens as well, um, and how the perfection that, that, um, that you seek in a, in a botanical illustration um, is almost similar to the perfection that is gained from a stock image from a library of, you know, from an image library that you've sourced from Google.